the gorgeous Tamiya RX 540VZ technical motor. Hey guys, welcome back to Tammy Legends once again. Thank you for stopping by. So, a motor video today. Um, I was kindly given this beautiful technical motor by one of our subscribers, um, amongst other stuff he sent me, which was awesome. Um, this is hands down my favourite brushed motor of, of all time, um, and that's purely down to memories of back in the day. And, and nostalgia, you know. Um, when I was club racing, I don't know what age I was, I've been 13 maybe, on the Sunday mornings, you know, these were £40 in the model shop and I had no chance of getting one. Mum and Dad couldn't afford one. They wouldn't have paid that money back then for a silly motor. Um, but it was just right up there. And obviously you Tammy lovers watching this, you'll know this motor. And it's just, everything about it is just special. Just the colours, the way it looks, the shape, the embell. It's just got a very special place in the Tamiya timeline. Um, and obviously the box it came in. Obviously, well, unfortunately, I don't have the box for it. Um, but that those small motor boxes with the box art plastered all over it were just... And that's why they're, they're super rare now when people pay good money for those boxes because there's nothing there's nothing like it. Nothing in this world like Tamiya packaging from back in the day. Anyway, in this video I want to, um, well, to start with, I'm getting very close to getting my Thundershot, vintage Thundershot finished and I really want to run that with the Technigold motor in it. So the idea of this video is um, I'm going to take this apart clean well first of all, i'm going to check it because i have no idea what the brush is or the comma like it could be wrecked as soon as i open it up i don't know i doubt it looking at it but you never know um if the brushes are okay and the comb we'll try clean it up we'll put some bear, uh, oil bearing bearing oil in the two bearings uh, and we'll just give it a very good general clean up um i have I'm, I'm lucky enough i do have the instructions for it i do have a couple of tools um, if you've got a technical motor and you've never taken one apart, you, there's these tools you need, especially this one for when you're taking it apart, which I'll show you. I'll, show, I'll go close up and show you how to do it. Um, but I do know, because I have, I've never done it myself, but I do know people who have just unscrewed it and then turned the end belt and sort of pulled. And with this particular design motor, if you do that, you, you can actually just rip the brushes off the little uh, metal arms. And that is such a shame to do. So I'll show you how this works, and we'll, as I say, we'll take it apart. Fingers crossed it's not too damaged, but um, uh, just a little bit of spec on it. Um, I think a lot of people nowadays, when when you see on the groups and stuff, and they talk about technicals, I think some people ex still expect them to be ballistic. You know, they're not. They're very slow motor. It's a twenty-one turn brush motor. Um, I think the the best the rpm is 19,000 at the best efficient yeah 19,000 under load you know that's not a quick motor um it has got adjustable timing and obviously it comes with bearings so it's a modified motor um i will show i'll have a play with the timing if we can if 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 the motor's in decent enough condition i'll be putting power through it and i'll um, i'll show you the timing um and i'll try on camera turn the timing up and down so you can hear the rpm increase and decrease again it's not something you should really play with i i'm i'm bad for doing it i try to wring the necks of these motors but the 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 more you increase the degrees of timing um the more you're going to damage the motor the common the brushes uh, the hotter it's going to run so it's not it's not especially on a motor like this it's not really worth doing um what i would probably do is um is find where the <clears throat> neutral spot is for the timing as it sort of its factory setting and i'll probably turn it up one or two degrees more than that but i certainly won't crank it right up it's just not worth it um so i think that's about it so that's enough talk so i'll bring the camera over and um we'll start stripping it and i'll show you how to do it right then so this is gonna be a bit awkward because i'm working around the camera but um with the technical it came with two tools now this is the spreader which is mega important for taking it apart 
and this one is when you're changing the brushes for new ones <laughs> not many people will be doing that nowadays I can't get hold of brushes um, so we won't, we won't be using that tool so if you've never seen a Technigold up close that's what it looks like beautiful thing um, that's the timing marks so at the end bell that black line um, now looking at that in that position that's actually not being changed that's in its factory settings which is awesome because if you get a technical and it's been cranked right up you know that it's had a hard life um right so to take it apart two screws there one goes all the way through this end the other has a little kind of nut at this end so before we start what <laughs> if you've never seen this it's probably not going to make much sense what i'm doing with spreading the brushes but when, when you see the inside of the end bell, you'll understand why. So, let me do this on. So, the two metal, see the two metal arms, that's the, and that's the metal arms and the brushes come over here. So it's a case of, let me get this down right, so that just fits in there. And then you push like that and locate it. And now, you can't tell, but that's opened the brushes up now. So you leave that in. And then these uh, don't over tighten these either. I've been guilty of that in the past. So when you're taking it apart, these things can come straight out. So that's one. Oops, keep hold of the end bell. Well, I do apologize. I'll say I'm doing this around the camera and it's never the easiest right so that's off so that's your second one and then that little nut falls off so this is this is all loose now um, as you can see it's turning so just before I take the end bell off just want to make sure that that's still in position and then in theory this end bell just lifts off very gently oh look at them brushes well there's plenty of life in it plenty of life in it and I'm shocked that motor's hardly run although it's got uneven wear don't know if you can pick that up on the camera oh wow you can see the three ridges in the actual brushes themselves this thing's hardly run that's incredible. So I'm guessing the comms in tip top condition. Wow. <laughs> there you go. So again, try not to touch the comm. Just push down and then pull out like that. And the rotor comes out. On this particular motor, if you just put your finger through and the front plate will come off as well. Um, so it's really easy to kind of work on. Wow, that's incredible. That comes in uh, great shape. Any of you experts out there on the Technigold, um, I'm guessing the, br the brushes were ridged. Obviously, you can see the markings on the comb and then the sort of the indentations on the brushes. I, I, I never knew, I just assumed they were flat. Um, you can see what that tool does now as well. You can see the little arms displaying it. But as you're working on it, you just leave them in. Um, you don't want those brushes clashing together. Um, wow, I'm I'm stoked about that, guys, to be honest. I didn't expect to find it in that, that condition. That's awesome. So all I'm going to do, um, I'm going to get a cloth, and I'm just going to wipe the can, get um, any residue, get that stuff out. But as you can see, it's in tip-top condition. Um, we'll clean the outside up. I'll get some bearing oil and just put some in that and also that. I'll try, I'll clean that a little bit, but it's not too bad. And then all I use, because I'm by no means an expert in this, um, is a, a pencil, eraser, rubber, whatever you call them, wherever you're from. Um, and that cleans, you can just rub that and that'll clean the comb up. And then the comb itself has these lines uh, I think there's three lines around it there uh, if you just get a, a knife very gently and just clean those ridges out um, and take that I think that's a fiber washer yeah 
don't pull that because I, they, they've snapped in the past on me. Just very gently apply the pressure and turn it at the same time until it comes off like that. There was two washers, a little washer on top as well. Very important that they go back together the same way around, guys. Um, but that allows you to get into the top of it and just clean any muck out. Um, so I'll, I'll clean that up off camera now. Right, that's cleaned up nicely. Um, this is sort of my level. I, I don't go beyond this because I'm not comfortable. Um, I clean the comb up with an eraser. That one's come up a tree, as I hope you can see. I put the washers back on the rotor. Cleaned all the dust out, wasn't too bad. Um, oiled the bearings, and I'm really happy with that. So I'll put it back together now, but um, I won't tighten it because I'll show you how the timing works. So when you are putting it back together, this bit fits one way, right? Only go, only fits one way. That clips on like that, and then carefully fit the rotor in. Those magnets are very powerful. Bearing in mind, this motor's from 1986. Yeah, those um, those magnets are in great condition. This is awesome. So before we put the end bell on, obviously. In more important than ever, make sure all these tools in place, um, parting those brushes. Um, find the timing line on the can, which is those grooves there. Um, and then you know which way the end bell goes, which is this way. And then very gently, it's just locate it into the end of the bearing and then push down. Now, this is the timing, I'll try and get this out of light. So that increases and decreases the RPM. As I say, we'll get the instructions out and we'll find out where the standard spot is. But just for now, we need to put it together. So nothing falls out. This isn't as easy as you'd think doing it on a camera, doing it around a camera. Oh my, I think I'll go with the easy one first. Easy one, he says. Yeah, locate that. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to nip it up, and then I'm going to take it back and turn. So that's in position, and now this might be a bit easier. The, the problem is the screws are going through these big sections here to allow the end belt to turn. So as long as you can see it all the way through, you've got to sort of locate it and you've only got this bit of movement with your finger and thumb to find the hole. Oh, I thought I had it then. Come on. Nope. Riveting video again, guys. <laughs> nope. There's about... 3 mil of thread comes through when you get it right there it goes to see that thread pop through so without let me just put that down so we don't lose it this nut only goes one way around because it's got like a, a for a flat screwdriver at one side so if I just sit that in there and start turning there we go find its thread and then take it back right so that's basically the motor built now making sure I'm putting pressure both ends take this tool out and that closes the brushes up on the comb again so we're back to timing so what I'll show you on the actual original instructions um, where is it this if it'll zoom in on there so it tells you where the factory setting is on here which is zero, zero timing. If you go beyond that, I think it's called, well, I can't remember what it's called, it might be retarded or something. You, the timing goes retarded, which you don't do. So basically looking at that, it's the third line along that you want to, oh, it's actually got a larger line, I do apologize. Yeah, 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 so there, look. See, that, it, that's matching up that larger line. Um, which is in that's basically factory settings I'm just reading the instructions as I'm looking so that's zero timing each graduation mark is 3.1 degrees 
Um, and obviously when you are doing it, which we are going to do, so when you do that, you hear the RPM increase and decrease. So what I'm going to do is let's. I'm going to. I've got a crude setup that I use to do this, which is just a manual speed control. I plug a battery into it. I set the motor going, and then I I'll play with it up and down, and you'll you'll hear the RPM increase and decrease. Unfortunately, I'm going to have to do it on a speedo that's actually in a car because I can't. The loose manual speed controllers I have, I don't have a ceramic resistor on. So what we'll do first of all is we'll just make sure that this is working. Right guys, very crude method, but it's just sort of, I've just set this up just to give you a rough idea. Um, the first and second speeds are not working, the resistor on the manual speed controller must be burnt out. So we've only got full speed, which just, I've just connected a 7.2 NIM to it. What I'll do is I'll get the motor running, obviously in the correct direction. Um, which is that away um, and then I'll, sh I'll just start turning the timing up and down and hopefully you'll be able to pick up the RPM increase and decrease Right, just want to nip it up without moving anything. I'll have to play this video back and make sure you heard that. I'm pretty sure you will have done. So we've nipped one up and then we've just got to hold the knot on the other side. Yeah, that's good. Again, don't over tighten guys. Right, so that is that in place. Um, so I've not cranked it fully up. Um, it's difficult to see on here, isn't it? You can see where I am. So I'm probably only in one marking up. But as you can see, it sounds great. I'll just reverse it. Forward. Sounds so sweet. Just disconnect that battery. So sorry for the crude method, but it was just to give you an understanding of it, to be honest. Again, it's not something you should play with. I always oh, I always get me uh, my wrist slap when I do a video like this from the motor experts. They're a little bit like the racing breed who watch my stuff where yeah, the <laughs> They're in a completely different area of uh, the hobby than I am. Um, anyhow, so that's basically it. It's as simple as that. I've got a Techni Power or a Techni Tune to restore, which is in a state. So um, I'm looking forward to doing that. I've ordered the new whatever Techni Power, Techni Tune. I've, I've got the decal from MCI to put on it. Um, but all the goals kind of come away. So what we're going to try is po we're going to try polish that up. Um, so it won't have the gold look, but it'll be polished, and then with the new decal on, should look pretty sharp. But I don't know what state that motor's like. Again, that we'll open it up and we'll have a look first. But um, yeah, that's pretty much that. So that's it, guys. Simple as that. So I hope you enjoyed this style of video. I was asked to do this by about five different people on the Technigold. Um, this motor is in superb condition. This has put a big smile on my face. I didn't expect the insides of it to look like that that's awesome so this won't get a hard life from me either um, this will have one decent run in the thunder shot when it's finished and then it'll be taken out and might not be used again i don't know i might just go into odd vintage things just for a quick run or two um, but uh, what an absolute great piece of history from the tamiya timeline superb not another motor like it in my opinion Anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed this video, um, leave in the comments what you thought, if you don't mind, and um, once again, thanks for watching, it's really appreciated. If you are new to this channel, if you can please consider liking and subscribing to support us, and if you do that, smash that notification bell for our weekly videos, and as always guys, 
Happy hour seeing.